Dang. Alright. It tastes like just a creamsicle. Going to go live in moments, guys. Moments. Yeah. As soon as this button turns blue. Yep. Cool. Perfect timing. Yeah. Do you want me to shoot everything or just like little snippets? Whatever you want. Alright. Alright. We're here. Hey, everyone, thanks so much for joining. We really appreciate everyone uh, tapping in on their fine Thursday afternoon. Um, hopefully you're not caught in the rain like we all were um, getting in here. Uh, but we are currently at Studio 18. We have Connor Smith with us as well. Um, What's up, guys? Representing uh, the Beat Street. Or the Beat Stream, <laughs> Studio say, 18. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Beatstream.com. Yeah. So check that out. Uh, Patrick's here as well. Say hey, Patrick. Hey, what's up, guys? Here in the studio. I'm yep. done beats afterwards. Yep. I'm, I like this. I'm reading over the rules. Don't get too drunk. Don't get too drunk. <laughs> I'll make sure. And so, as is tradition, we're going to go ahead and start off with a toast. Toast. He didn't tell me we are doing this part at 3 p.m., but uh, <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> That's right. And so, Those to, no, to no BS, all right? To no BS. All right, yeah, cheers. Guys. On the BS show. All right. <laughs> a little fireball action. Right on. I love that stuff. <coughs> I got you. You got a drink to think? <sighs> I'm so thinking the drink right now. <laughs> Patrick hates fireball, I'm by the so way, I'm so thinking the drink. Uh. All right, so welcome. Uh, this is a show all about startup founders and their experiences. I know, I'm like feeling it, right? Good stuff. Yeah, and we want to uh, bring Connor on the show. He has um, a plethora of experience, and he'll be able to share his expertise in, in several areas. So uh, we'll jump right into it. Um, and uh, you can always find us on www.bootstraps.live or facebook.com slash bootstraps live. And uh, it's a show that we do every Thursday. Um, and we just want to provide value to you guys, provide value to our listeners, give you guys you know, stuff from in the trenches um, and help you guys to get through some of those issues that you might not be able to overcome without having some experience um, kind of uh, shown to you how to do it. Yeah, I love it. it. Real talk right here, real talk. Real talk. Yeah. So. Um, so we want to give a special thanks to uh, One Million Cups. Uh, Connor also attends the One Million Cups Orlando event. Technically a brand ambassador. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Came on board recently. As a brand yeah, ambassador. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. I've been part of the Million Cups community for four years now. We've yeah. hosted two of them at the studio. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I presented probably three, four times in the Very past good. four years. Oh, no way. Yeah. You presented Studio 18 or... Just different crazy ideas. I don't know. <laughs> right? Yeah, and so um, most recently, he's right, they added uh, a few roles to their organization. Yep. Um, and so you can become a technical advisor, different things like that. So if you are familiar with One Million Cups, definitely um, reach out to those guys if you want to be involved in a more organized role or a more official role. Um, but yeah, every Wednesday, they have an event in the morning at 9 a.m. at Rollins College. Uh, they let two companies pitch and present their comp present their idea. And then uh, we all get feedback. And Connor was nice enough to help them out with a new app that they're do using for feedback. Do you like that? Feedback. Was that good interaction? I do. I, I do. thought it was cool. And I like their URL. It was slide or S L I D O. Yeah, yeah. slide. What do you think about that, Connor? What the app? Yeah, no, no, the URL. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Patrick doesn't like it when it's not uh, like dot com. Dot com? Yeah. yeah, I feel like it's weird with the dot in the middle of the word. I think. It's weird to us now, but in due time, I think that's how all URLs are going to be. That's what You're I'm just going to yeah. be used to it. It's just, it's just, where's the dot? Yeah. 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 I love so it. Just tell them the word and say, where's the dot go? The yeah. trend is going that yeah. way for yeah. sure. Yeah. So consider that if you guys are coming up with new ideas. You, could, you don't have to do the dot com. You don't have to spend $10,000 or more. Right. Um, so we also want to give a big shout out to uh, Starter Studio. Uh, that was where we first started as um, their accelerator uh, incubees. And... Um, they have their class 10 applications open now, so we That's put the right. link. Yeah, we put the link uh, in uh, the Facebook description. So <laughs> if you are a budding startup and you want to, you know, get some expertise and get some help, uh, go ahead and apply, and uh, they can help you out. It's a three-month program. It includes free office space and other resources, including coffee, which of course we all need coffee. Free mm -hmm. coffee. Yeah. Um, but Connor was nice enough to bring his favorite drink. Of course, oh, we did into that. One yeah. of the themes of our show, so we'll let him stuff. talk about it. Yeah, when I get rich, which is going to be really soon. <laughs> um, I'm going to stock my whole fridge with this stuff. I made the trip today just to get this for the show. What is it called? Aloe Dream JJ okay. Juice. It's it's guys local to Central Florida. Okay. And this is it's like a creamsicle. Oh, nice. It's, it's orange, coconut, and aloe vera all in one 
bottle, and it's like the best thing I ever tasted in my whole life. Wow. Yeah. I don't get a discount for, for saying this, and I, and I hope I, I should now because I'm really on podcast with it. If you guys are looking for a brand ambassador. <laughs> right? No, this is the best stuff in the world. In fact, I wish we had a little more Fireball. I might mix it, but... Oh, yeah. That would be uh, good. Uh -huh. Yeah. How you say Actually, it? we're vodka. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but I don't want to break the second rule. <laughs> don't get too <laughs> Um. So, of, of course, I'm Spencer. This is Patrick. You guys met us on the last show. We have a company called Beyond 360 Media. We're currently developing a platform. We're in stealth mode. We'll talk about that in future episodes. Um, but we're going to give Connor a chance to kind of introduce himself and just give general introductions about what you do nowadays, anything you'd like to share. Cool. Uh, I'm Connor Smith. We are sitting in Studio B of Studio 18. There's multiple rooms at this place. And what is this place? So we've been here for about five years. I started Studio 18 eight years ago in a small little house right across from Rollins College. And uh, the place reminded me of Hitsville, USA, which is in Motown. They started, all those Motown records started in a, in a little house. And uh, I found this place. I fell in love with it across from Rollins. I was going to start a studio back in New Jersey, but I, I fell in love with the Orlando scene. And uh, our motto is Community is King. It always has been since, since day one. Well, We're eight years deep, and we've recorded literally thousands of independent artists and uh, big industry artists, too. People like Daddy Yankee, Joey Badass, um, uh, Tony Cook, who's uh, James Brown's drummer. Mm. All types of really cool music comes through here. And now we're offering the space to uh, to things like this. Yeah. Entrepreneurs that want to utilize the space for all types of creative ways. That's awesome. So that's a little bit about Studio 18. I've created a lot of other companies along the way. <clears throat> Beatstream is one of them. The it's essentially the Beatstream.com. It's a... It's like the Netflix of beats. So if you're a rapper or R&B artist or pop singer and you need to find instrumentals, mm -hmm. our site allows you to have access to an unlimited amount of instrumentals for just $9.99 a month. Oh, wow. And you have unlimited access to not just the instrumental itself, but the usage of it. So you can have millions of plays on Spotify as long as you're a member you get to use the music, and it's uh, very disruptive. No other beat leasing site is doing what we do with that. Awesome. Right. And then last but not least, I'm working on uh, a new project where I'm exploring myself as an entrepreneur and uh, inspiring and motivating people along the way that are going through this process. I think we have a lot of resources for people who have made it that we look up to, but we want to show, my team and I want to show the process at ground zero we want to show what it looks like when it's ugly, too. Yeah. We want to show the whole process, and uh, I think I've got a lot of great insight from my, my successes and my failures, and I just want to spread the word. Yeah, I'm we're, excited. We're hopefully going to be involved in some of that stuff moving yeah. forward. For sure. Somehow. I definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> I can totally see that. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. excited. So, um, one question that we like to start off with, um, who is your favorite artist and that is also mm. a business person? If you can think of one. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Right off the bat, Jay-Z. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jay-Z, yeah. Jay-Z's my That's favorite, man. <clears throat> you know, he says, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business, man. So yeah. let me handle my business. <laughs> Love that. And uh, Jay, I've been a Jay fan since his first album. Uh, you know, Jay was one of the first rappers to really say, I want to get signed by a label, but I'm going to be the label. Mm -hmm. So he just made the label himself, and uh, he's he's brilliant every every move that he does, you know. How are we gonna How are we gonna sell a million records? People don't buy them anymore. I got an idea. Let's partner with a phone company, and when they buy the phone, yeah. they get the song with it, and it will still technically be certified platinum. Yeah. So, you know, Jay, Jay's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah. He's the best. He's the goat. I like that. Awesome. Awesome. So you spoke a little bit about Studio 18. Um, what sparked your interest to join this industry? <clears throat> mm. When I was 12 years old, I got a Tupac album from my best friend's older brother and uh, I was kind of thinking that rap wasn't a cool genre <laughs> just a lot of noise and I don't know what they're talking about and whatever I you know I didn't I grew up in Montclair New Jersey 10 miles uh, west of Manhattan it's a very diverse town so I'm very open minded but just net wasn't really you know I wasn't a music guy I've been an artist my whole life painted my whole life up until 12 uh, and then after that but um but when I heard that album, man, it changed everything. And then I started saving up some money, mowing some lawns, built some equipment, or, or built up some funds to purchase some equipment, and started a studio in my mom's basement in oh, Jersey cool. at 14 oh, years man. old. 
And, you know, one thing led to the next, and uh, I found myself down here in Orlando for Full Sail. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to go back and start a studio in Brooklyn, like I said, but I fell in love with the city. Awesome. That's Great awesome, music man. scene. Started from the basement. Started yeah. from the basement, yeah. literally. Yeah. That's yeah. like in the trenches. In the trenches. Literally in the trenches. Can we yeah. talk about that a little bit? How, I mean, <laughs> people yeah. think that they have to have this master plan. Mm -hmm. You know, they think, oh, I have to know from A to Z all the way through, and I have to follow that plan. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? And, you know, what's what's the truth? The Being truth? kind of been from the basement <clears throat> to where you're at now. The truth is it's it's healthy to think about planning. It's actually healthy to plan, too. But it's it's equally as, if not more important, to just do. Mm. Because the plan constantly evolves. You know, in the startup world, there's something we call an MVP, a minimum viable product. We talk about it all the time. I'm sure it's something you've probably talked about on your shows. That we're working on right now. Right? You guys are, you guys are in that phase. Yeah. A minimum viable product is just something, a way for you to bring your idea to the market in any way. And... I'm of the train of thought where if you're proud of your minimum viable product, you're not moving fast enough. Oh, yeah. I've heard that a bunch of times. You know, it's you so should almost true. be a little bit embarrassed yeah. because by the time you're proud of it, there's a few things that, that are wrong with that. One, you, you're too connected and it's harder to pivot. Oh, yeah. Two, you're, you're, you're not practicing the most important part of innovation, and that's evolution and pivoting. Right. So you get in a habit from the beginning of throwing an idea out there, seeing what the market thinks, which is more important as a business person than what you think, and then learning how to adapt. Can you think of a specific <clears throat> example where you've had to do that before? Or Well, I didn't used to think like that because I, I didn't know right. that you, you were supposed to. I built the master plan. But with the Beatstream, for example, that company, sure. We Frankenstein together a, a, a website. <laughs> you know, we, we, we tried to figure out work for hire agreements with different uh, producers. We, we contacted different lawyers, and we, we had to just Frankenstein the whole process together. We we got early early users in, and the site barely operated right. Yeah. It was just <laughs> barely held together by uh, ClickFunnels, which is a great uh, marketing tool, landing page site, but oh, it's, yeah. not a, it's not a WordPress site. On you ClickFunnels. Know? That's amazing. Yeah, built the whole thing on ClickFunnels, a, a, a an entire database of, of production. How long ago was this? This company was about, I'd say, 10 months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we got it all out in about a month. Wow. The whole thing, top to bottom, a thousand, pro a thousand productions from probably a hundred different producers. Oh. I built an entire team, a content team, media team, and, and we put something out there. Right. So it does not have to be perfect when you first launch. No, guys. in fact, it shouldn't be. Right. If if it is, then you're either a freak of nature uh, for being able to make something perfect that fast, or you spent too much time working on your MVP. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then that comes with major challenges with that as well. Oh, for as soon sure. As that hits the market. So. Yeah. Sure. And if if you spend all your time developing, someone else might be able to get to market quicker, and then you've now missed. The it's boat. a very big thing, man. There's a window of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get in there. Even now, I have a lot of trouble with mainstream platforms, right? Yeah. That are supposed to be perfect, right? They've been around for ten years. YouTube, Google, and I'm finding software issues. But you always see at the bottom, provide your feedback, right? Yeah. Send help or send, you know, your thoughts. <laughs> send help. Yeah. <laughs> when send Google, send help. I don't know how to use your platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When Google puts out something new, you know, I'm, I'm always down to beta test it. Look, if you trust the company, they're not gonna do anything that's gonna ruin your life. You know, or crash your computer, but it's gonna be buggy. Yeah. And there's people that appreciate. Some people just like giving feedback and like being at the ground floor. Yeah. Take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. You know, know that there's people that want to work on the beta version. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, take advantage of them. They'd be your Absolutely. early pioneers and your evangelists. Um, and they're gonna give the right feedback. They're gonna be the people that are gonna say, hey, before you launch this to a major audience, you like, might want to think about this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. I'm so glad I put this out before I spent twenty thousand dollars on the developer. Discovery. Right. You can save money. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh but, yeah. Yeah, customer discovery is huge. You spend some time doing customer discovery. Oh yeah, I, I spent a lot of time doing customer discovery with the Beatstream. Okay. And nice. uh, we we put out a lot of surveys. I wanted to see exactly what type of music they wanted, where their pain points were, what a good price point level was. Mm -hmm. um, their understanding of intellectual property and how many people are just 
illegally downloading productions and then releasing them on major platforms expecting to get paid. Oh, no, no. So, yeah, so it's, and you can imagine, I see a lot of stuff like that just coming through the studio, people not understanding intellectual property. So, yeah, it, it, it had us pivot a little bit to become an educational platform um, on behalf of those things. I also found out that producers were really frustrated because they weren't getting paid their royalties. Mm -hmm. So you've got a, a, a model that exists right now, a beat leasing model, where there's like a marketplace, you upload a beat, instead of selling it to a, an artist for $100 to own your production, they lease them for like $20 a piece. Anyone can use them. But the lease agreement says you're supposed to pay the producer back. So you're supposed to, upon royalties. So when you get a million streams on Spotify, you get about a $6,000 check. You think a kid out in California when he gets a $6,000 check is going, oh, I could, let me make sure I send 3000 of it to that guy in Idaho that produces beat. No way. <laughs> so these guys are getting screwed over. Think about yeah. it. You know, yeah, so, about so what we do is on our platform, I realize, well, then I need to centralize the distribution as well. Mm -hmm. So Beatstream also offers distribution. And that makes sure that the money comes through the platform and guarantees the split goes to the producer. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So... You identified all of the, all of these through things. the customer discovery through phase. Discovery. Absolutely, yeah, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, what were some of the biggest barriers to entering um, either the you know the beat stream market or the Studio Eighteen market? I mean, you can speak about either one. Um, yeah, which one you want to talk about first? <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one you think is most relevant. Yeah, the right? one that comes first to mind. <clears throat> yeah, where there's big barriers to entry, and how you overcame them. So. Let's talk Studio 18, a big barrier of entry. One is the, the real estate. Okay. So a lot of people that just want to start a studio, the, the, the tricky thing is the, the MVP was going to be in your house. Right. So, okay, what happens when it's in your house? You start running it, you get some clients, they're coming in, all of a sudden mom's like, who's coming in the crib? Or your roommates are getting ticked off, or your landlord's like, what's going on? or clients start going, I feel like I'm not in a home. So there's a big barrier of entry uh, in going from and making the leap into a professional studio. You have you need the property. Yeah. You know, so you, you know in, in today's day and age with, with so many startups, you don't necessarily need property. There's so many great internet, mm -hmm. you know, business opportunities. Yeah. But with the studio, you, you do need space. So that was a, that was a big, barrier for me in figuring out how to strategically acquire the space yeah and it's chicken and the egg right because who's going to give you a lease when you don't have a business and how are you going to have a business without a right without an actual real estate you know? right so yeah. i had to buy it wow <laughs> yeah. and wow. i bought a place that was the place we're sitting in right now that is commercially um it's residential zoned but we we got it rezoned in a special way where we could do uh, a, a business it's called um what is it called? Home occupation license, okay. which is really uh, a good tip if you're trying to start a business in your house. Apply for a home occupation license. Okay. Now, how was I paying for the mortgage? There's a lot of rooms in this place. You've seen this whole building. Yeah. We had a lot of the people working for me living here, okay. paying rent, there you go. and I was able to eventually start moving people out of the rooms until we didn't need that income anymore, and it could be fully 100% professional. And that's that's where we are now, and it's five years <laughs> yeah and that's creative thinking right there is able to <laughs> way of thinking. And, yeah and rent those rooms out to pay the mortgage yeah to yep. keep it going and then slowly adapt and get them out yes that's awesome yep. yeah that's kept really us alive awesome. so uh what have been the most monumental milestones for you so far as far as studio 18 or yeah beach stream <clears throat> monumental i think something monumental is uh almost it intrinsic how do I explain this I think the biggest breakthrough for me happened recently in realizing that two things about this studio one it's not a great business model that's not easy to admit to yourself when you create something and it's been years down the road and you're into it and you've affected the entire community musically you've helped a lot of people you've, you've provided jobs you have people extremely passionate about something you go and you take a step back and you go wait a minute I'm barely actually making that much money off of this because it's brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. There's so many logistics that go into this. If someone wants to book a session from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., you've got, if they show up, they can show up a little late with eight extra people. Mm. 
maybe inebriated, haggling at the door. That messes up the next person. And this person also wanted to come in to stay, but he needed that time, so that doesn't work. Then you got to go the next day. It's like the hotel kind of operation. And you're just not maximizing the space. Not to mention, you got to pay the engineer, you got to pay management, you got to have competitive rates with the full sale kids down the street that are mm -hmm. that will do it for almost free. Yeah. Wow. And you go, man, this is not a very scalable operation. It's fun. So I think a big breakthrough was saying we need to find more scalable solutions, and that's what we're doing now. Um, we're we're building in membership platforms. We're really going to go in a more educational direction. Do more workshops out of here, and not just workshops out of here, but evergreen products of us teaching how to build your own studio, uh, how to affect a, a music community locally. I, I think we have so much great input on those things and we want the brand to represent those things and go in that direction and then not necessarily even make that much money off of recording artists here, just record really cool artists and that helps build the brand. Mm -hmm. And you would never have been able to do that without building the first mm -hmm. iteration, right? And then now you're at a place where you can do that, right? You couldn't have envisioned that from the get-go, I don't think, right? Or would you say no, or, yeah. no, I didn't, you know, when I was a kid, the word entrepreneur was not a buzzword like it is right now, you know? Sure. Part of me wishes it was because I might be a little bit farther along as a business person. Mm -hmm. Part of me is happy that it wasn't because I think I, I did pioneer a path that most people weren't doing at 18 years old. Mm -hmm. But it... The resources weren't there. There weren't the Gary V's. The, you know, there there weren't. There wasn't it the wasn't a popular lab, degree. <laughs> there wasn't so many accelerator programs and collab spaces. You sure. know, these things, at least they weren't talked about. Mm -hmm. You could ask everyone in, in my high school what the word entrepreneur meant, and maybe 1% could even explain it. Yeah. It's oh, not well. how it is they now. They couldn't spell it. They couldn't spell it. <laughs> I don't know if I could still spell it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's just, it's a different time. It's a different time. And uh, I think... I'm glad that I didn't know because I probably would have never built this place. Hmm. And I'm glad that I did build this place. Yeah. You know? That's funny. That's interesting to think about. Yeah. 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 All right. So uh, through all that, all the challenges, were there any times that you wanted to quit? And uh, through those times that you did want to quit, can you think of a time that you overcame that? And maybe how? Yeah. Yeah. Man, all the time. <laughs> still crosses my mind daily. the question is how many times a day yeah. you know um, look I think I think <clears throat> endurance is what separates the really successful people from the ones that just never quite broke through it's not necessarily intelligence always work ethic is important but I'm talking long term work ethic because you will fail so many times. And the other thing, too, that was, that was difficult, now it's taught and it's preached a little bit more, but when I was younger, like, when you failed at something with a business, it was like, shut it down. What are you mm -hmm. doing? Now it's like, oh, that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that's part of the business model canvas? Like, you fail, and then you fail again, and then you twitch, and then you pivot. And yeah. These weren't these were concepts <laughs> to me. Yeah. It was like, I failed. Now I'm living under a bridge. Now I'm like, yeah, what am I going to do now? Should I take yeah. it behind a barn and shoot it? You know, yeah. as, as uh, Kevin O'Leary said at this his talk the other day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it happened all the time. It still happens. I think my advice is put yourself in a position where you can endure. So, yeah, we move fast. Yes, we face failure. Yes, all this is painful, but for me... When I built this place, I did something smarter than I realized I did. Mm. I made sure that the lease was going to be paid. It didn't count on the cash flow of the business. I see. So that every time I was banging my head against the wall trying to figure out how to get customers, I was able to live through that. Yeah. You know, every we all underestimate our, our burn rates mm -hmm. because we all think our ideas are going to work and we don't care what anybody else says and we go, no, but I believe in it. I know it's going to work and in and, and, and one year's time you'll get your money back five times. Mm. It takes years. Yeah. It takes years. And if you can put yourself in a position to get used to that, expect that, plan for that, have it not financially ruin your life, which, by the way, as an entrepreneur, I've lost a lot of friends in this game. Yeah. It's sad. It's scary. But I think when you start getting used to that endurance, you just... 
you get used to those feelings and you go, you doubt yourself and you go, well, I've been here a hundred times and every time I push through it works out. So just, just muscle through it. So you become bulletproof. Yeah, you start to become bulletproof. But it's, it's completely normal to feel doubt. Like it's, it's completely common. I think it's really smart people, uh, realize that there's so much more to learn and that's a scary thing. It's a scary thing for me. I, I have moments of, of high confidence in what I'm doing. And I have other moments where I go, oh my gosh, I know nothing. I am so underqualified for, for my next mission. It's embarrassing. I shouldn't even be in the room with these people. And you know what? If you're feeling that, you're in the right room. Hmm. Those are the rooms you want to be in. You just need to remind yourself when you leave that that's okay. I felt that. I'm supposed to feel that. I feel kind of dumb right now. I feel dumb a lot, you know? Uh, and the only way you'll feel dumb is if you see if you see things that are more complex than what you know. Mm. So that means you're in the right spaces. So the tricky thing about all of this is, yes, when you put yourself in those rooms, you're going to feel that more often, you know? Yeah, but if you're in those comfortable spaces, you're never going to be... You're not going to grow. Yeah, you're not going to grow and you're not going to be pushing yourself. I, I think exactly. It's like a plateau. So, it's a, so being an entrepreneur is a, is, a, is a dangerous lifestyle to your psyche. Because you'll never be comfortable. Mm-hmm. You're not comfortable. You're, always, you you're not satisfied. You're yeah. doubting yourself. But there are those moments when you feel really good about accomplishment. And it makes it all worth it. So you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable on a yeah. daily basis. Plan yeah. for failure. <laughs> Plan for failure. It's part of the process. Yeah, expect it. I think I saw Startup Grind posted on Instagram that we'll see who was really working a year from now. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, you, you're not going to see it instantly. It's not going to be the instant gratification of like, oh, next month my company's successful. You know, Beyond 360, for instance, is not a home run. Like, Patrick and I are moving and shaking and, you know, we're still yet to get paid what we want to get paid. You're so, ground zero. You're yeah. a step above ground zero. And we're looking at a three-year plan, a five-year plan, but it's persistence. And you're right. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's really yeah. much. Um, uh, advice on marketing. Okay, cool. Okay. I love marketing. Yeah. <laughs> and so we know that you're probably very good at click funnels. you mentioned. Sure. But... Uh, I mean, very marketing. good compared to some other people I know, no, but compared <laughs> to other ones, like, definitely. And, you know, Patrick's trying to learn ClickFunnels, I think you mentioned. No, I, I have a little bit more experience in ClickFunnels. Oh, okay. okay. I've cool. done a bunch of landing pages with uh, e-commerce and drop shipping. Oh, okay. Um, I bet, yeah. Okay. Um, but just any advice in terms of whether it's local marketing for Studio 18 or any digital digital marketing that you've done mm. with uh, your website, uh, just general advice. Sure. Yeah. You know, I started the studio off of guerrilla marketing. Okay. You know, I was at every show, talking to every band, talking to every artist. Okay. And uh, you go into a place, and I'll give you a scenario. You're at a coffee shop, and uh, it's a local hip-hop showcase. Mm-hmm. And there's maybe 30 rappers. You know, shout out to Austin's Coffee in Town, best local hip-hop show. We just town. drove by there. Yeah, right here. yeah, great place. Yeah. And there's 30 artists in there, and you go, wow, this is, this is prime real estate right here. So you go in and you start talking to people, you give them your business card, you give them a tour. I've got some advice on how to handle situations like that well, and then I've got advice on why I don't do that anymore. Okay. So, when you walk into anywhere, you got to provide value, you know? I think when you hand uh, someone a card, you seem like you're providing value, but to me, you're still asking them to do something. You're asking them to give you uh, their time to read about your company and see if there's a solution that they can pay you for. Man, give, 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 give first. Go to them. Hey, your music's really great. You know, I run a studio in town. I'd love to have you by some time, but you know what? I looked in your Spotify page. You're getting about 300 monthly listeners. I bet if you just change this one tactic about how you release music, because I did a little research on it, that you will automatically get 200 more listeners a month. Wow. And they go, oh, thanks, man. Yeah. You walk away. It's like, who's that guy that just came up and just said something to help me? And then you do it again. And then you reach back out to him in a text message, and you help him again. Then you bring him by the studio, and they're so much more inclined to want to work with you. And... I take those same principles into the digital marketing realm. 
Now, the reason I don't do that as much anymore is because I realize it's just not a good use of time. And time is money. So now, yes, there's 30 artists in there, but how many of them are currently working on a new project? How many of them at, at Austin's Coffee, for example, or a coffee shop, how many of them already record at a studio? Mm. How many of them record out of their home? How many of them even have the budget? And when you really break down these numbers, it's maybe 5% of them. So you go, okay, there's, you know, three people, maybe 10%, let's say. There's three people in there that could be a, a, the right type of customer. And that's like the ideal target to reach. Right. And how many of them, how much time do I have to spend to talk to all of them to find that person? Mm. And then what's my funnel to get them in? And with digital marketing today, you can do that all through the internet. And it's really cool. You can, you can put an ad in front of 10,000 people. For a hundred dollars, a thousand people for ten dollars. The trick is you got to go back to the same principle I just talked about. What can you give people first to get them invested in you and trusting that you're a source that can help them? Yeah. And that's my advice for all new companies and big companies: be a trusted source that can help someone without and provide value without them having to give you anything first, right. and then be able to give them something back. Nice. And guys, that's what we're hoping to do for you. We want to provide as much value for you as we can. Okay, so just keep tuning in. We're going to keep pushing it out. Yeah. Yep. And then they'll Absolutely eventually fair. ask you to buy something. And you probably <laughs> should because it'll be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so Only good people on this show. We'll need new cars. So. <laughs> right. Well, no. uh, you talked a little bit about how you hired team members to help you out with the studio. You had a couple of in here. Uh, yeah. Any advice on people that are listening? Any tips and tricks or any challenges through hiring and building that great team of people that back you? That's, I'm glad you, you asked that. That's probably the thing that I'm best at, is building teams. It's, it's hard to teach. I'm not the best manager. I'm not the best, I'm not an HR guy. You know, maybe I can come up with a cool way for a commission structure, or, you know, a, a good work day that can keep people motivated. But what, what I'm good at is finding a way to inspire people to believe in a mission that I've created. And I think that is the true core of building a team. You need to believe in what you're doing so much and you need to be able to articulate it. So communication is absolutely key. Some of the best innovators I've ever met are not actually great team builders or team leaders because they they. They, they can't explain, they can't present it in a certain way. So I think, you know, advice on building a team, we were just, uh, I don't know if you guys made it to Starter Studio the other day, but there was a gentleman that came and presented a book called Splitting Pie. Hmm. Really, really awesome book. And it totally goes hand in hand with my, my ability to build a team, but he addressed something that I, that I am learning about. When you're starting a company, sometimes you're bootstrapping it, right? Mm -hmm. And you're so what are you asking of the team? What can you provide? Blood, sweat, equity, you know, donuts in the morning and, you know, a, a dream. Yeah. And that's what we're working towards, you know? Yeah. It's not the uh, the greatest sales point unless you're a really really good motivator. Splitting pie talks about how to I, I advise everyone to look into this book. It's a uh, slicing pie. Sliding slicing pie, yeah, like slicing I said. Pie. Slicing pie talks about how to spread out equity in a company based off of the value of what you provide. Yeah. So let's say, for example, I said, Spencer, I got a new idea for a company and the content's really important and I'd like you to get involved ground floor, but we don't have, we're bootstrapping it right now. I want you to be involved long term because this is what can happen. You know, what do you think? And you go, I'm down. So Slicing Pie talks about valuing First off, what is the market rate for what you'll do as a videographer, let's say? Well, this is how much I get paid. Yeah. And then let's say I say, well, you know, okay, you, you get paid this much, you know, if I had the money, but right now I can pay you this much. So it takes this other amount and it, evalu it, it evaluates it and then gives you an equity in the company based on it. A mistake that I've made with starting companies is I find other people that get involved and you just, you, 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 
we tend to split the equity so wrongly. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden from the beginning, this guy's got 15% and he shows up to work and does barely anything yeah. for, you know, weeks on end and then fizzles out. And then, and then what do you do when that happens and what's the paperwork look mm -hmm. like? So when you're starting at, at a ground level, I, I think that being able to articulate your message can help you build a team. Okay. And then also identifying how equity is going to work. If you can do those two things, you can, you can build teams quicker. And with that model, it's a moving target, right? I mean, they don't just get stuck in a fixed equity split, it's right? It's dynamic. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah, it can grow, dynamic, it can yeah. dilute. You know, it depends on how much work you put in, and it's it's all based off of a system of fairness. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's it's designed to be completely fair, even for the CEO. Mm -hmm. You know, what is your value, and how much work are you putting? You don't get to just say, well. I'm going to take 75% and then do like a slicing pie method for the other 25%. I mean, there's no rules. It's your business. You could do that. But a real fair system puts you in the in the middle of the pie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that, in turn, will increase the motivation, I think, for everybody. Absolutely. Motivation is key. Yeah. 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 Awesome. That's, yeah, so go check out that book if you guys are interested. Um, we have taken a look at it as well and was referred through Greg Pollock, who's another local guy yeah, uh, with great. that model. He is running his newest venture with that, which is um, Vue.js um, okay. coaching business online. I'm, yeah. I'm butchering that, but yeah, Greg <laughs> It'll Pollock. It'll be in the uh, comments somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will post it. And he's he's got links out there specifically discussing the slicing pie model. So it's, it's another really resource. model. Yeah, uh, he's done videos and, and presentations on that. So we'll try to share the links to that as well. Um, any key, you know, advice you'd love to give that we haven't talked about? Um, hmm. Key advice to startup companies, entrepreneurs. Yep. People that are in the trenches and just might get stuck somewhere and need, and need that in the face need, need to hear that one day. thing from you today. You know what I mean? To get them through to next week. Um, I could I could go tactical. I could go to motivational. We've got time. <laughs> yeah, to I'll you. start with tactical and I'll end on motivational. Perfect. Uh, tactical time management is so important. Um, I pack my calendar. It's not necessarily in the best way. And I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to grow, you need to spend time wisely because it's the one thing you can't get back. Mm -hmm. And there's a few there's a few tactics. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. You want to use those really wisely. How you and, and some of the littlest things, you know, you think about how you eat, how you sleep. You can save a lot of time, not just money, but time if you think about how you do those things. Um, you know, Gary Vee will always say, people's like, man, I got a, I got an eight hour work day. How, how am I supposed to spend time? He goes, you got another eight hours. What are you complaining about? You've got to utilize those hours. I think a great use of those hours is, um, studying. I think research is really important. One thing I did for years is I stacked my calendar so much that I never left enough time for me to continue to learn. Hmm. And that happens with with young entrepreneurs we get so busy in what we're doing that we can't grow as our industry is growing because we're not becoming knowledgeable anymore mm -hmm. you know when you went to school you had to show up to class so you were in there learning now you have to discipline yourself to go back to class whether that's reading a book or you know on the laptop so it's I think that's really important. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I really you know do my continuing education stuff so absolutely now. networking is key uh, one common mistake I see with networking, it's a mistake I make sometimes, is that we don't prioritize or schedule our follow-up system. Oh, yeah. So we go to networks, we meet with so, so networking events, we meet with so many people, we get cards, and then we're off to our next meeting right away or our next deadline. What I do now is after networking events, I literally schedule time after where I'm specifically and strictly following up and categorizing the people I met in a spreadsheet. Where I, think about all the people you met, and yet if you had to go to one place, you'd have to be digging through your phone, your wallet. You know, if you had them all in one place on a spreadsheet, and you summarize your talks, and you followed up with them, it's just a common mistake I see. Such good advice, especially yeah. the scheduling component. I actually did that for like the first time this week. Cause we it's went great, to the, right? Yeah, we went to the Orlando IX convention, and I had plethora of business cards, plethora right. of things. And I what do you usually phone. do? They stay in, this, in the part in your, in your car, and you're <laughs> off to your next meeting. Yeah. Right? Yep. I mean, yeah. hundreds of people happened. can resonate. And then I found the cards. 
And I said, <laughs> oh, I was supposed to reach out. So then I scheduled about 30 minutes, and that's what I did. I sent out the emails that I wanted to send it makes out. makes all the difference. And I followed up with the people I wanted to follow yeah. up with. Plan that every meeting that you go to. It's amazing. Oh, this, this event's from 5 to 6? Cool. I can't be booked till 7 because from 6 to 7, I'm following up. Awesome. Yeah. Motivational? Motivational. All right. I think this speaks to kind of what I'm going through right now okay. in my personal brand. Relatable. No, that's perfect. It's relatable yeah. and motivational. Hopefully it motivates me when I talk about it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We want to help you too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think what's just as important as the growth of your business is the growth of yourself. Self-growth. I thought for years as a leader, if I was working on the greater good, at all times, that was being a good demonstration of how to allocate my time. I didn't make an Instagram post about myself in two years. I started to not even be in touch with family anymore. I lost friends. And I thought I was sitting here being a good leader because all I cared about was the cause. And guess what my team around me saw? They said, Connor is a hard worker and he means well. But I don't, I don't want to be like that. Right. I want to. I want to be able to work on my music. I want to be able to. I want to be able to grow. I want to be able to be a family person. So much so that they almost didn't even want to talk to me about the things outside of their life. Maybe because they were afraid that I was concerned they weren't constantly working. And I had it all wrong. And I just finally realized that. That even as a leader, if you can show your team that you work on yourself too. That's being a good demonstration. Because good leadership, in my opinion, is a good example of life. Aside from being able to have technical language and understand your, your industry, you want people to be able to look up to you on a personal level. So I'm going, I'm revamping everything. I'm, I'm working on myself, my personal brand. I've worked on so many companies, Studio 18. I'm, I'm synonymous with Studio 18 in this, in this town. I have a good reputation. But nobody knows who I am. You can't even find anything on the internet about me. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So when I go into these business meetings and Joe over here is talking to me about the next big financing, cryptocurrency, blockchain topic and really is appreciating my, my input on it. And he invites Brian over and goes, Brian, you need to meet Connor. I go, oh, man, I'm going to wait to meet Brian. I have to shake his hand. He goes, Brian, Connor can help you with your podcast and your jingles. And I go, oh. You know, this is my fault. I have not introduced myself as anyone else. So I think as an entrepreneur, when you're trying to manage your time, put time in for your life yeah. and growing yourself because it's the foundation of everything. And it's something that we tend to forget about a lot. And it's uh, one of my big missions to spread to, to all of these struggling and starting and aspiring and successful entrepreneurs that are out there right now. Thank you for that. Nice. Is, yeah. is there a mic around here? Because I just want to drop one. <laughs> <laughs> give someone the mic. Or give Connor the mic. I feel like so, you're yeah. just speaking to me, you know, again. So, are you guys still here? It's, 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 it's <laughs> no, but um, I think we're going to wrap it up here. I know that you have another thing, and then I'm actually jumping on a flight as well. Awesome. Um, so, how can the listeners help you? Um, and do you have any big announcements to share? Uh, where can people find you if you are trying to build a personal <laughs> yeah, brand, those types of things? For sure. Um, how can you help me? Well, I would challenge you, especially if you're locally to Central Florida, to find creative <laughs> ways to utilize this space because I'm offering it. Okay. Uh, on, a, on a free level, if, if I feel like the cause is good, you're welcome to use this space for a meetup, for a podcast, uh, just a place to get inspiration. So if you can... Present something to me that uh, that shows what you're doing is, is 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 for the right reason. You're welcome to use the studio. And I really encourage everyone to come check out the space. I mean, he's yeah. got different sized rooms. He's got all the equipment that you guys need. Really cool eclectic stuff in here as well, including artwork. Really cool uh, staff and team here. Yeah, we're so. in the smallest of all the studios yeah. right now, and this is a cool little room. But yeah, yeah wait yeah. till you see the other ones. And <laughs> right through this window is, is the engineering. Yeah, there's a vocal booth yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You should turn the light on in there. But yeah, yeah, and that's sweet too. <laughs> um, Carry so the camera in there. Announcements or announcements? Well, I'm working on my personal brand. We're looking to launch in about two weeks. Okay. Um, C Smith. Uh, 
1881 is my Instagram. I think, I don't know, I haven't posted in two years. <laughs> uh-huh. But it's all about to change. I'm going to be posting every single day. Okay. It's going to be a, a, a really cool lifestyle brand. There's going to be a podcast. There's going to be a, a, a video blog. Awesome. Um, right now, the placeholder name uh, of the company is uh, is Ground Zero Entrepreneurs. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So so that's, that's yeah. what we're thinking. Uh, the coolest part about this whole thing is we're going to document everything, even us trying to figure it out. So you're going to see where we're messing up, what we're doing the right way. And I've got Rita right there on the other side of my finger. She's <laughs> part of the team. She's filming for you know content for this whole thing. So we'll definitely have uh, Beyond 360 back involved awesome. around here in so many ways. And, and Patrick, we're going to follow up with them, Yep, right? yep. So in probably two or three weeks, yeah. um, we'll update on our Facebook, Instagram. Cool. About your progress, your launch, you know. So everyone awesome. can keep up yeah. to date with you and follow Good. Along. Anything that can motivate us to be accountable to a deadline. Yep. Two weeks? Great. Yeah. So we got a launch down two weeks. There you yeah. go. You heard it. That's, That's right. I love it. <laughs> I love it. We're holding you accountable. Now, so. Connor, are you going to the industrious event later? The, the launch party. So no, I want to so bad, man. I'm heading down to South Florida. Right now. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah, I, I, I will be at the, the Gary V on the 28th. Okay. Tony Robbins and Gary V speaking at Amway. You can get tickets on Groupon for really cheap right now. Okay. Yeah, so. I think uh, Robert Hershevek is there from Shark Tank. That's right. Yeah. Yes, Robert's yeah. good guy. So. But uh, well, yeah. You'll be there, right, Patrick, tonight? Yeah, Industrious Launch Party, 530. I'll cool. be there. Come hang out with me. So that's going to be a great time as well. Another so, downtown awesome. co-working space. Yep, the, the newest co-working space down there off uh, Orange and South Street. I've heard really great things. Nice. Yeah, great place. Great, cool. great place. So please click the follow button so you guys can keep up to date with all of our upcoming shows. Again, we're going to do this every Thursday at 3 p.m. live in 360. And uh, you can check us out um, for 1 Million Cups every Wednesday. We're going to also live stream that. And uh, we do want to remind you guys that the Starter Studio applications are open. And go get your JJ juice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Thank thank you guys so much. Thanks so much. Take it easy, guys. guys.